Hi, I'm Father Joseph Mary, and welcome back to A Simple Word, where we reflect on the gospel for the coming Sunday. One day, a teenage boy, the son of a single mother, lost his glasses while he was playing basketball. After a long search, he told his mother the glasses were nowhere to be found. And immediately, she marched outside, and within half an hour, she returned holding the glasses in her hands. The embarrassed son said, Mom, I don't get it. I looked everywhere for those glasses. How did you find them? And his mother replied, because we weren't looking for the same thing. You were looking for a pair of glasses. I was looking for the $300 we can't afford. Motivation determines a lot in our lives. Looking at the world today, it's easy to see what motivates many people. The desire for power, the accumulation of money and material things, the pursuit of pleasure, even the need for security. And none of these things are necessarily bad in and of themselves, but they can never become our treasure. In Sunday's Gospel, Jesus continues with the string of parables that we've heard the last few Sundays. In the parables from this Sunday's Gospel, Jesus is teaching us about motivation. He begins by saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field. This is an expression unique to Matthew's gospel. Both Mark and Luke use the phrase kingdom of God. But Matthew uses kingdom of heaven because he's writing specifically to a Jewish audience. And the Jews so revered God's name, they don't dare speak it aloud. The kingdom of heaven. What comes to, to mind when you hear those words? I asked that same question to the teenagers in our youth group last Friday. And they said, pearly gates, a beautiful castle, clouds, bright light, deceased relatives, and hovering angels. They had very vivid images of the kingdom of heaven. Maybe we might share some of those images. But what came to the mind of a first century Jew when he heard that phrase, kingdom of heaven? Because it was a very different image altogether. For centuries, the Jewish people had been enslaved by one empire after another, forced into hard labor and levied with heavy taxes. Their incredible temple in Jerusalem had twice been desecrated and destroyed, and there was no longer a king to rule. Yet despite all their hardships, a single hope carried them through their sufferings, the Messiah, the Christ. The prophets foretold that when the Christ came, he would rouse his people and crush the enemies of Israel. More importantly, he would restore the ancient kingdom, and all would be as it was when King David sat upon the throne and reigned over a free and prosperous people. So when a first century Jew heard kingdom of heaven, one thing came to mind, a return to the golden age of Israel. And so here we have it, two very different groups of people from two very different times and cultures, from two very different under with two very different understandings of kingdom of heaven. Our youth group, perhaps like some of us, were looking into the future at some shining kingdom in the clouds, a reality beyond earthly life, while the Jews were looking into the past at a memory of what had once been. But there's a serious problem here, because when Jesus Christ came proclaiming the kingdom of heaven, he wasn't talking about either one of these. The kingdom of heaven was the focal point of his teaching, his main message, the subject of the sentence, and it went right over the head of the Jews who heard him. And I think very often, it goes right over our heads too. So what did Jesus mean when he spoke of the kingdom of heaven? The three parables in Sunday's gospel help us to understand better. In the first parable, Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven as a treasure buried in a field. Now, a man found this treasure, then buried it again, and he sold all that he had in order to buy the field. In first century Palestine, wealthy people stored their treasures in vaults guarded by soldiers. These were the first banks. But for everyone else, what protection was there against thieves? The ground. Common people dug deep holes on their land, and they hid their treasures in order to protect them. And whoever owned the land owned whatever was on the land, including the treasures. 
So today, we have an image of a man digging for a treasure, but he's digging on someone else's land. And he's digging deep. He's seeking something desperately. And some, suddenly he stumbles upon the greatest treasure he's ever seen. His heart is moved with desire. He wants that treasure. He'll give anything, do anything, sell anything he can in order to acquire the treasure. So he buries it again, and he goes to purchase the land in order to obtain the treasure. Jesus continues, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And at first glance, it seems that the fine pearls is the image of the kingdom of heaven. But that's not what Jesus says. He says the kingdom of heaven is like the merchant who is searching. Here, the kingdom is not an object being sought, but an active force within the person himself. It's that indescribable yearning, the deepest desire of the human heart, the spirit groaning with words too deep for understanding. In both parables, the man sells all that he has to obtain the treasure. The kingdom completely reorients his priorities and his focus in life. Think St. Maximilian Kolbe taking the place of a man condemned to die in the Nazi death camp. Think Mother Teresa who left a comfortable life teaching children to care for the poorest of the poor in the slums of Calcutta. Think St. Francis of Assisi who rejected a life of luxury to care for poor people and lepers. Both parables elicit a profound decision in the heart of man. Jesus is telling us something crucial about the kingdom. It's now. It's not some glorious remembrance from the past. It's not just a mystery beyond death. It's now. And there's an urgency to respond. In Italy, on the final day of World War II, the Allied troops discovered storerooms filled with food and supplies left behind by the German army. In a flash, news reached nearby villages and people came racing to obtain whatever they could. They didn't want to miss out. Some went home with wheelbarrows full of bread, others carrying blocks of cheese and blankets. Jesus is saying something similar to us. There's a treasure being offered, a precious pearl. What are you waiting for? Why is Jesus speaking with such urgency? He tells us in the final parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When the apostles went fishing, they used a net called a sajin in Greek, a drag net. It was a huge square net with cords and weights at each corner. It hung upright in the water so that when the boat began to move, it formed a huge cone that swept up all kinds of fish. So as long as the boat was moving, continuing on its journey, the net remained at the side, sweeping up a variety of different fish and other debris. Some were good for eating and others weren't. It wasn't until the ship neared land that the net was drawn up and the fish were separated. Jesus is using a familiar image to teach a clear message. Not all that appear to be in the kingdom truly belong there. There will come a sudden moment when the time for fishing is over, when the net swept up. And then the separation of judgment will be upon you. This is the region for, urgent, for urgency. A moment is approaching when our time for responding is at an end. Even now, the net is drawing us to the final hour. There will be a moment of judgment in which the good are separated from the bad. A moment in which those who have rejected Christ will lose the kingdom. And those who have accepted him will gain it. Because the buried treasure and the pearl of great price are Jesus Christ himself. To discover the kingdom of heaven is to encounter Jesus Christ. As he told the unbelieving Pharisees, if it's by the power of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. To encounter the kingdom of heaven is to encounter Christ, to enter into Christ, to put on the mind of Christ. And you will meet Jesus Christ today. Don't look ahead to some far-off castle in the clouds, and don't look back at some memory of bygone days. God is a God of the living. He comes to you today. He's speaking to you in all of the everyday events of your life, in your sufferings, in your comforts, in your joys, in your pain, through your loved ones, through your enemies. He's coming to meet you at every moment. So let's not dare sit back with lukewarm complacency. 
The kingdom of heaven is upon us. Today is the day of salvation. This is the time for decision. There's a story told among the desert fathers of Abba Lot, who one day went to see the aged Abba Joseph, and he said to him, Abba, as far as I can, I recite my readings, I fast a little, I spend some time in prayer, I live in peace, I try to purify my thoughts. What else is there for me to do? And in response, the aged Abba Joseph stood up and he stretched his hands toward heaven. His fingers became like ten lamps of fire. And he said, if you would, you could become all flame. This is the response Jesus is seeking from each one of us. I'm Father Joseph Mary, and thanks for listening to A Simple Word. If you found this reflection helpful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.